Hey everybody, happy holiday, and uh, I'm so glad that we have this time together today. I know it's such a busy season, and uh, I believe today uh, we'll be able to help you, because you know what, it's only December the 15th, which means we have 10 days till Christmas. That's an eternity, right? And uh, I'm a planner, I'll be honest about that, but I enjoy the chaos of Christmas. I enjoy the hustle, the bustle, the hectic, the whole side of it, because it just reminds me that when my world might seem out of control, God can keep everything in control. And really today what we want to do is talk about uh, Christmas, the holidays, and family, uh, because that's what matters to us as pastors. I know how busy we are. We're going to be a little quicker today just to help everybody from a time perspective. But what I want to talk about is just the mistakes we've made, uh, the lessons we've learned, the things that might be helpful to people who are watching today. And I love the statement that says, a wise person learns from their mistakes. A wiser person learns from the mistakes of others. So hopefully you'll learn from the good things and maybe even some of the mistakes we made today. I'm so glad I have my wife on the webinar with me, Tamara. Hello. You want to say hey it's to everybody to real everybody. quick? And, and then I have our two oldest children, Michael and Andrea and their spouses, Christy and Jacob. So we're just glad to have, have, have everybody here today. How y'all doing? We're glad to Great. be here. Great. Yes. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Merry, Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. We appreciate all of you so, so much. Yes. Well, you guys Love have you guys. some good things to share and, and I've seen some of them, so I can't <clears throat> wait to get into it. But I want to start just by talking about the biggest mistake I made as a pastor. <laughs> and that is, I remember it was 1993 and I thought, okay, we have a little bit of money, all right? We, we got out of our little sanctuary and we renovated the gym and we grew a little bit more. And I thought, you know what? I wanna do Christmas big because I wanna, I wanna pastor a church where because Christmas is big in our hearts, it, call, it calls people this time of year for God to live big in their hearts and for our next generation to realize Christmas really is a big deal from God's perspective. So, oh man. I, I made things way too active. We had a, our first musical drama. I pioneered a Christmas Eve service and I had to oversee things. I was still coaching and training. And so we had one night that we had free as a family from the beginning of Advent. If, uh, if you're not an Advent person, I know the non-denominational world doesn't talk about Advent as much as the Catholics where I was raised, but Advent's the four week season of Christmas. And I remember I had one night free. And I was, as I was getting ready to leave the church in the afternoon, somebody came to Tamara and she talked and she talked and she talked. And I started watching my one free night fade away. And we got in the car and I said, honey, what did she talk to you about? And she said, oh, there's a pastor in the area who he and his wife aren't doing good. And she was asking me if we'd pray. And I said, well, if we don't get our act together, we're going to be the one she's talking about next Christmas. And, and we, had to, we had to figure it out. And I'll tell you what's worked for us at Faith Family, and that is we start the first two weeks of Advent, and it's about the joy of giving. And so we, in the past, we've done things like senior proms in our assisted living centers. We've uh, pioneered things with Toys for Tots that caused every kid to get a gift in the area. We visited kids in the hospital who are sick. And it just starts out with the joy of giving. And it climaxes at our Christmas concert that we just had last Sunday. And that tends to be our biggest event. Sometimes we do a Scrooge production. Sometimes we do something in-house. But the community loves to come and be a part of those days. But as soon as that's over, in my mind, I make a little intentional adjustment. And I say, okay, we're going to go from giving to warmth right now. So it's not about the community anymore, but it's about our departments. How close are our departments? And what kind of fellowships happening within our departments? How about our family? You know, how, how warm is family life within our pastors and our staff and our leaders? And we started the Christmas Eve service. And for instance, because warmth is the goal, we limit how big the production can be because it's a different kind of production, right? It's a different uh, goal that you're, that you're hitting at. And it's really worked so good for us. Now I have plenty of nights because people are trained to do all their parts. And I enjoy every year experiencing the joy of giving. And then also just the joy of warmth, just just really seeing our church family be a family. So you guys have any memories of those early days? 
something. Well, I remember uh, when you said we started it, like you pioneered it, that's the right word, because you were in some of those dramas. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I remember um, some of that. Do y'all remember this? <laughs> I think Dance we have moves some. <laughs> my first time playing a piano in, uh, in church, Dad sang the yeah. song. Yeah, oh, you talk about goodness. nervous. I, mean, I was in, so in, nervous. In, yeah, <laughs> For both of y'all. <laughs> yeah, I sang one note, and then the choir came in quick, because we tried to... No, it was good, though. So, yeah, I just remember, uh, but you know, those days are special, like, yeah. you know, and, and I, you know, depending on what stage of, of, of life you're in with your church, if that's where you're at, it can still be a really special season, even though it is a lot of work. So yeah, yeah. those fun memories, yeah. for sure. For sure, for all of us. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a lot of stories of those dramas, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think back to when we tried to have a big choir and the stage broke. I don't know if y'all remember that day. But <laughs> we had a choir up there, and, and literally Doc Hart, who's our building guy, went and got jacks from his thing, and he jacked up the yeah. stage. Yeah. So so after, we called it an intermission, right? We just fixed the stage, <laughs> came back and sung. And, but, but all that, and then one day, I don't know if y'all remember this, but one day we had, a, uh, we had a, our first petting zoo. And wouldn't you know it, like a big windstorm came and all the fences went down and the kids weren't petting the animals. Oh, we were no. chasing them oh, all man. over the airport campus and, oh, and trying goodness. to catch the animals. But uh, those are memories, oh, right? Do you remember the time? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the time of the smoke in the, the uh, musical drama and somebody got choked and we had to start yeah. over? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I forget who that was. I think it was Jim Moss. <laughs> it was Jim Moss. But th those, those are all just memories. And, <laughs> but I think the thing that, you know, I sense this in church right now is that there's a day that attractional church was so important and, and we spearheaded that. We worked hard to be a part of that because what happened was we were content as the church to hear the word and know the word. But some of us, especially that weren't raised in church, we had a burden that the people we hung out with, they weren't responding to church as it was. And so we worked hard to become more attractional and people came, we saw them get saved. But right now I think it's another shift. And I think that attractional church is being challenged to be more of a community. It's, cha it's, it's being challenged to cause God's presence to dwell more in our sanctuaries. And so I've just enjoyed the whole journey. And right now I think it's so important that when people come to our Christmas services, they feel the purpose of Christmas. So we kind of did mm -hmm. something today, and that is we prepared our thoughts in four <laughs> veins. And the reason we did it is because the church fathers started seeing about the fourth century that the advent or the coming of Christ wasn't being received in hearts well. Now, it wasn't really until the Reformation that people developed the things that we now call advent calendars and advent wreaths. But what they do is they call us to the four purposes of Christmas. And so what I want to talk about today is just from you guys. I, I, want, I want, you know, to help pastors. I know it helps me uh, just talk about things we've done, things we shouldn't have done, whatever they are just to help people really receive the holidays well in their heart and not even just their churches, but their families and their kids as well. But Mike, before we do that, we're gonna welcome some new yeah, uh, members. Sure. I, uh, and I wanna let you guys know I have this up here this, because I'm, we're checking out the feed, the, the chat. So if you have any questions or anything like that as well, please yeah. feel free to let us know. And just hey, to, to Pastor Joe Sr., Eric, uh, FFCG guys. staff, hey. Pastor Michael, Pastor Daryl, Pastor Soren. It's good to see you guys, and Thanks we're just for looking forward here, to today. Guys. Yeah, yes. um, but let me welcome some of our new our new churches, uh, new members of the of the network. We have a lot of them today, so I'm going to go through this. We have uh, Dennis Ashley from Harmony Ministries in Middletown, New York. Wow. We have Gigi uh, Bimadeli from God's Eternal Evan Evangelic. Evangel sorry, Evangelical Ministry. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Ibad, in Nigeria. Nigeria. All right. We have wow. Fisher Benjamin from the Life Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tony Carter from Grace Abounds Fellowship Church in Leander, Texas. Uh, Eli Chibo from Destiny Praise Outreach Ministries uh, Incorporated in Liberia. Steve uh, Childs or Chiles from Chartel Church of God in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Daryl Clark from Abiding Faith Christian Church in Castor, Louisiana. Uh, Gerardo Diaz Fonses Fonseca from mm -hmm. Connection Church in Dayton Beach, Florida. Uh, Robert G Giller from Crossroads Community uh, in Utah. We have John Hopkins from uh, Murrell's Inlet Church in uh, South Carolina. We have Stephen Jeffcoat uh, or Stephen Jeffcoat from Living Faith in uh, Oklahoma. 
uh, Christopher Jones from New Heart Ministries in Charlotte, North Carolina. We have uh, Godfrey Mabasso from Faith Alive Ministries in South Africa. Wilson wow. Makaka, I think, Seek the Lord Makaka. Ministries in Kenya. Mm. Awesome. We have Jeffrey Martin and William Martin uh, from one, Jeffrey Martin from Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church in uh, California and William Martin from Christ the King Tabernacle of Worship in Plainfield, New Jersey. Robin McCulloch from Community Church of God in Mountain View, Missouri. Brian Aginja from the Church of Jesus Christ Ministries in Kenya. We have Kalu Oji from the Living Word Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Sean Pinder from Miracle Healing Center in McKinney, Texas. Stephen Poe from Northview Church in Parkway, Carmel, Indiana. Martin Reed, Trinity Family Church in Tulsa, Texas. And then Ann St. Fall from Florida Worship Center in Wikiwashi, Florida. So welcome, guys. We're so glad to have you guys. Part of the same church family. Significant church right there, Wikiwashi, Florida. Yes. You talk about <laughs> believing for every town to have a great church. Yeah. That blesses my heart. You know, when you're reading those, it made me think about when I would come home from different places. And I tend to bring where I come home from. I keep talking like that. So in Pennsylvania, we finish our sentences up. So, so I'd say, do you go to the store? Or if I go overseas to India, I talk with very, very clear words. And I would come home and it would take me a little while to adjust. Y'all remember laughing? So it's kind of fun listening to you have to deal with all those international things right there. But Tam, let's, uh, let's talk just a minute. Explain the, the concept of the Advent wreath. Yeah, like you said, it was created by our church fathers to help us receive the coming of Christ well. So I know they have the Advent calendar, the Advent wreath, and Advent ca candles, which are right here. And so the four, uh, actually there are five, but the four ones that uh, we're going to talk about today are hope, and then peace, joy, and love. Hmm. Yeah, and I'm going to start just by talking about uh, the, the candle of hope. They call it the prophet's candle because in scripture over a thousand different prophecies have been fulfilled. When I was 17 years old, that was one of the things that really grabbed hold of me when I started walking with God. I thought, I don't want to live my life uh, just doing my best when there's a God who has a plan for my life that says I'm going to have this amazing experience called life if I learn to let him bring <laughs> forth the hopes that he's placed in my heart. And I remember in my late teens, listen to every tape somebody made on faith just because I really wanted to understand how to live by faith. And one of the things I want to make sure our church really gets over this holiday season, one of the things I wanted to make sure my kids got was just how certain God's hopes are. The beautiful mm -hmm. prophetic pictures he gave us of Jesus and he fulfilled every single one of them. Now in our lives, it doesn't quite work the same way, right? That we have to cooperate well if those hopes are going to be fulfilled. And I love this scripture in Hebrews chapter 12, where it's really not talking about a good example. It's talking about a bad example, Esau, who had a call, but he didn't get to live in the hopes that God had for his heart. And the Bible says we're to make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. If you have kids, <clears throat> living at peace is not easy, right? And they remember when I would get up and I'll, I'll let you guys finish this. All right. Are you happy today? Are you holy? <laughs> Are you holy? Because if you're not holy, you won't be happy for long. We used to say that all the time. <laughs> little, Are else? you happy? Are you holy? Because if you're not holy, you won't be happy for long. And that's basically what the scripture says when it says, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and no bitter root grows up in your soul. If you don't fulfill God's will, your heart doesn't feel good. You start getting bitter. You start feeling bad about life. And it's interesting in that verse that there's two different words for see. The first time it means that God wants us to see him. And it's a word that means with eyes wide open, you gaze at the incredible plan of God. And that's what you do when you follow God well in your heart. One day you look up and you think, man, I couldn't have done this. God, this is amazing. But the second time when it says, see to it that no bitter root gets in you, it means to look carefully. It's episkopos, which means you're an overseer of your own heart and you make sure that nothing bad gets on the inside of your heart. And one of my favorite Christmas stories is the story of Simeon, who is almost like an afterthought. It says that it was 40 days later and it was the purification rite. Mm -hmm. Jesus was being purified. You always purified the oldest son because uh, the oldest son has a, you want to get the call right in the oldest son because he has a lot of influence with the rest of the kids. And so God chose that day 
to have an older man named Simeon come up. And it's a beautiful story because it tells us three things that cause us to live in the hopes of God. Number one, it says that Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Simeon knew the promises of God. And this is such a great time for us to sit with our kids <laughs> and to remind them that there's a God who makes promises and who fulfills promises through his power. And it's inter interesting because consolation is talking about loss. When you console somebody, you comfort them, but you don't just comfort them, but you console them that even though there's loss, even though your life isn't perfect, even though everything hasn't worked out like you thought, don't give up on God because he has a way of restoring and making up for lost time and doing those things. So he was, he knew the promises and he knew that God was going to do something in Israel and make up for their loss, which was the whole diaspora and the whole time they were taken over by foreign nations. And then it says that the Holy Spirit was with him and it been, had been revealed to him that he wouldn't die before he saw the Messiah. So he didn't just understand the promises of God, but he had a real close relationship with the presence of God. And I love this because it says, moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required, he took him in his arms and he praised God. And he sang one of the beautiful songs that will be sung in uh, monasteries across the world as they get ready for the, for, for the coming of Christmas Day. But if you want to hold your, your, your hopes in your arms, man, know God's promise, live close to his presence. And then when he moves you, know that he is a pathway into the dreams. And I know we all want that for our kids. We want them not just to know the principles of scripture, but to trust the pathway of God in their life. And uh, Tam, talk to me about things over the years when, when you would just, you would, you would see, how, how, how did you help them come to the point where they found the hopes that they have in their hearts? The kids? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that a lot of times it's just listening to, to them and what's in their heart and what's going on in them and kind of just, just uh, leaning in to see, you know, what they're excited about, what their desires are and, and just asking questions and just... Yeah, it was interesting because Michael and I were both baseball players, right? Yeah. <laughs> but when he was playing college baseball, he came, came to me one day and he said, Dad, I love baseball just not as much as you. It's probably an idol in my heart, just to be honest. But anyway, uh, and I remember one time we were together and uh, actually a friend was with us too. And we went out and he saw Michael play as a baseball player. And then he saw Michael come in and play at the piano. Michael was probably about 12 or 13 years old. And he looked at me and he said, he's not called to baseball, he's called to the piano. I said, how do you know? He said, you notice what he went to whenever it was his turn? He said, he's playing baseball, but there's something in him yeah. that God put in him. And uh, it, it's just cool to see, see stuff like that. God's will isn't that hard. If we can make people understand it, he puts it in you. You just can't let the devil talk you out of exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. Who is it that says it's more formed than found? I guess God's will. I like that phrase. Yeah, it's really good because it is in you. It's a part of, we've always said that you can't take out what God's put in. If it's there, it's going to come out, you know, and, and all of our kids, our four kids, all of our grandkids are also different. And that's because God created them individually and unique. And, you know, you just got to, you love them all and, and just watch God do what he does with their life. Well, God has a plan for families Amen. and he puts in different gifts and one of the things that, I mean, really decades of pastoring has taught me is that every person is immature. Every person is incomplete. Right. If you show me a baby God blesses, I'll show you a baby that was loved and helped right. by somebody who really helped them mature. And the reality is the reason God puts, gives us lack, whether we lack maturity mm -hmm. as a baby or whether we lack completeness in our gifting, is so we discover love and we learn to be a community. And it's, it's just cool to me to see how God creates unity by by making us need each other's gifts. I mean, that, that's, that's right. to me a really cool aspect of the whole thing. You know, another way I think that you get in touch with the hopes of God or you, you grow confident in his hopes, and I'd love to hear from some of you, is just watching God's hopes fulfilled. You guys grew up in a church where God, God asked us to do impossible things mm -hmm. at times and then it happened. Mm -hmm. And I grew, that changed my life. I had mentors who who showed me that. So then when it was time for God to speak to me, I had the confidence to follow that. That's good. That's good. 
You know, I'm a PK, so I grew up in a home, and I can tell you the difference it makes to have somebody right in front of your eyes follow God and trust God. And, uh, you know, it just makes you think, well, man, if he does it for them, he'll do that for me, you know? And you don't ever want to live outside of that because it's too supernatural. It's too good, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I um, I just, I think that's that's a really awesome thing to be able to watch it and see it because so many people don't get to do that. But I'm thankful that our kids, our grandkids get to watch mm -hmm. God yeah. at work. I think work. it's also uh, cool, not just to watch, you know, we got to watch, but, but that you guys brought us in yeah, on the journey. True. And I think that made a whole nother, a whole, it took us to a whole nother level yeah. of understanding it. And that's something that I appreciate, but I think that is so important for people in ministry, just to know that when you, yeah. when you're living these things and bringing your kids along, it's doing more than you realize. Exactly. So. Yeah. Well, again, our goal is just to talk about the things we want God to do in our heart and do well in our, in our families and our church families, the, these next 10 days that we have. And uh, one of the things we want to do is we want everybody in our family to rejoice in the hope of God. Yeah. Because if they rejoice in the hope of God, they're going to hold in their arms the hopes yeah. of God for their life, just the way Simeon did when he held Jesus. And then the second one, Andrew, let's talk about peace for a minute. Let's talk okay. about that the second <laughs> candle the church fathers came up with was a candle of peace. Okay. Well, um, we did briefly talk about that. I would, I would talk about this. And I thought it was funny because we have three toddlers, I guess, three, two, and one. <laughs> so practically there's not a lot of peace. <laughs> you really got to work for it. But um, that's kind of what I was thinking about when I was thinking about this is that, you know, um, Isaiah 26, three says, you keep in perfect peace those whose minds are fixed on you, those who trust in you. And I mean, that shows us that living in peace takes intention. It's not just something that happens. Right. So that made me feel a little bit better about, <laughs> about my reality that no matter what your, your life looks like, no matter how chaotic the world is, because we all know that it is, you can intentionally create peace in your life by tapping into that gift that, that God has given us. So um, as I was thinking about that, for me, it was honestly pretty practical because during the season, I watched you guys, as we were talking about, intentionally create and tap into that gift of peace, not just in the holidays, but especially at the holidays. And a lot of times that just takes, I mean, we got to sit down, <laughs> gotta, we got to prioritize what are, what are our, like, what are we looking for this Christmas? For us right now, it's what do we want to show our kids about Christmas? Mm -hmm. You know, what do we want them to get? And right that's now that's good. really elementary, but we're doing things like Advent dinners that you talked about, you know. <laughs> we're trying to intentionally create time to talk about Jesus and the gifts that he's given us. Um, and so that, you know, we have to prioritize it, we have to plan it, and then we have to do our best just to stick to that plan and, you know, things are going to happen. But when you do that, it just creates like, it just creates a sense of peace and it yeah. just creates a sense of, um, yeah. comfort around yeah. the holidays that I think is, it's actually pretty practical, you know, mm -hmm. you just yeah. tap into it. So, yeah, you know, for me, hope, if you don't know scripture, like I didn't know scripture as a kid. And I remember first I read it just for the do's and don'ts because I was <laughs> trying to strengthen the do's and don'ts of my life. <laughs> Society was getting a little bit crazy, but then the prophetic nature of scripture is really what captured me when I was a teenager. And I thought, my goodness, God wrote this book. I've got to get to know it. Right. So 50 readings later, it's my favorite thing to do. I mean, I love Mondays because I don't have to stop till to go to work. I can just read as long as I feel like it. And uh, it's, it's just amazing. Uh, nobody should ever get too busy to live close to God because of the hopes they miss. And then peace. I love the word in the Greek because it's irene. And it talks about order that creates peace and prosperity. So this whole world that we live in, you know, the sun is 450 million degrees hot. That's how hot it is. And so if God didn't have the precision to do everything just the way he did it, where the sun is the exact right distance from the earth and the galaxies all work together, if we just spun out a little bit, we'd either freeze or fry. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a reality right. that, that everything that God did around us, it says two things to me. Number one, I'm not, I'm not responsible for everything working. That's right. I, I can't make it all work. I'm not smart enough to make the whole <laughs> world work. And the second thing it says is if I rely on him, it's gonna work. Mm -hmm. And that's what peace kind of says is my life's bigger than that's me. Right. Yeah, right. I'm not responsible for everything, but if I rely on God, he's gonna make things work. And, uh, to me, if hope is about 
knowing there is a God, peace is about honoring this God that we know, you know. So, Jake, how about you? First time I've got this here, it's bothering me. There we go. <laughs> uh, be real, right? right. <laughs> um, well, like Andrew said, we're like learning, teaching our kids to learn about just the Christmas, the meaning of Christmas. And um, I remember she was asking me, okay, what are we going to talk about? I was like, I don't have nothing. <laughs> I'll just piggyback off of you. But um, after reading uh, our daughter Ava's, her little new Bible that, she's, uh, that she has, uh, we talked about the Jesus, um, talked about Mary and Joseph. That's the mom, Jesus's mama, Jesus's She did daddy. good Sunday she night. Did. We yeah. were over for an <laughs> Advent <laughs> dinner. Man, I can't yeah. believe the questions you. Have a picture of the drink? Is that yeah, yeah, do, yeah. do we yeah, have we one have up? I'm yeah. sure we have one. Show them Ava. Ava. Yeah. Ava's Ava the, the oldest yeah. girl. Then we have Lincoln, who's the middle child. And then uh, Will. Um, and Will we call him Will Will. Will Will. Will, Will. <laughs> He's the youngest. Is it just our kids right now? Then yeah, yeah, we'll, okay. we'll get to ours later. Uh, <laughs> aren't you we got a really good picture. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny how I was like, the Holy Spirit talked to me about peace through a child's book, even though I read textbooks and go to college and all this stuff. I'm like, wow, this would have been cheaper. <laughs> um, but just the journey of Jesus' birth, there was no peace. I mean, they were fleeing from uh, yeah. the uh, higher authority and the king. Um, Jesus, came, Mary gave birth to Jesus in a manger, a barn, animals everywhere. That's not peaceful. I mean, I never gave birth, but I seen it in action, and my right hand still glitches sometimes um, from Andrew holding it really tight. Um, but if you look at Jesus' life, you look at even afterwards, his later years, like there was no really peace, but what came brought Joseph and Mary so much peace was that they were fulfilling God's promises yeah. in their life. Mm-hmm. Like you were saying, it's not about peace for us, it's peace of the, for the kingdom of God. How can yeah. we build That's the good. kingdom of God? And I think so many times we, as Christians, we perceive peace as vacation, feet in the good. sand, um, for us, like, no kids, overnight trip, <laughs> sleep in, breakfast in bed. But th- as Christians, we die to ourselves and we follow Jesus. Yeah. So it's our selfies desires are gone and we're trying to pursue yeah, God. That's good. And I think that brings a lot of peace. I know mm. for us, that's it good. makes this journey of following God, following the things he has called us to do with confidence and knowing mm-hmm. that he's going to be with us no matter what. That's so right. when it comes to Christmas, um, it can get chaotic, it can get crazy. Financially can get, trying to buy gifts for everyone mm-hmm. and then creating memories with our family and now <laughs> other memories <laughs> with other families. Yeah. It's like, whoa, he, he, how he just made me think, You made me think of something that we came to more than one Christmas and her dad had the opportunity to use this place and, and later got a good deal. And, and so we had a couple of Christmases where we could go and just have a free Christmas it, you know, snow, all that. And uh, then he sold it. And I was like totally bummed out. And I remember looking at the kids saying, you know what? We can afford to do this one time. I don't know if we'll be able to do it again. <laughs> you, you guys remember that? I, I, I said, we're going to take a vacation. <laughs> we can afford to do this one time. I don't know if we're going to be able to afford to do it again. Back, but let's go have a blast. <laughs> and then we went up the steamboat. And I don't know if you guys remember, we got like this record snowfall. Yeah. And we went the cheaper time. We went over Thanksgiving. I, and you weren't guaranteed snow. And we got this record snowfall. And I thought, thank you, God. Jesus. You know? <laughs> and, but, awesome. but, you know, I, Jake, when you were saying that, I thought about when Jesus said, My peace I give you. Mm -hmm. And he said, in the world you'll have trouble, but be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. And the truth is, if we don't know hope, what happens is we're living in a world system. And we're if if hope isn't strong in our heart, it's because we're freaking out over all the legitimate reasons to freak out (laughs) in a world that has an evil genius who's making people's lives difficult. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of this, we have a God who inspires and who fulfills hopes in our life and in a world system that's crazy you know we know this but we have to help the world understand that peace will lead to the marriage you want peace will lead to the family life you want peace will solve the problem and and I kind of love the hectic nature of Christmas and it's because I'm more of a a guy that I couldn't live that way 24, like 12 months a year. Some of you could, but I I couldn't live that way 12 months a year. But I love it because it reminds me that it's in the hectic that you prove love the most, right? It's when everything's not working that you prove, hey, let's love each other. Let's trust God. Let's get through this. So, so let's, let's experience hope, hope well, let's experience. And then the third one. 
at me. Joy. Yep. Joy. Okay. <laughs> well, you know the the angel told uh, angel told the shepherds that this would be a season of, of the, the good news would bring great joy. So so Christmas should uh, joy should characterize the Christmas season, and not just the Christmas season, but every season. But um, we know that we have to choose joy. That we always that joy is not just always there, but we have to choose it, right? So. Um, uh, uh, Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So I think, you know, when we don't choose joy, we don't have the energy. We don't have the passion to be able to do what, what God's called us to do. So first of all, I just wanted three quick things that, that help, that's helped me keep my joy. Number one is prayer. You know, prayer uh, changes our perspective. It helps me with my attitudes. It helps me with my priorities in life. It helps me keep a soft heart toward people and wanting the best for them. I tell you, prayer, you know, just time with God does so much for our inner person. David said in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. So that really refuels our, our tank. And then secondly, planning. And I know, Angie, you mentioned that, but, um, you know, planning helps, really helps me. Planning helps you keep joy and not lose it. Mm -hmm. Del Carter he said that uh, 10 hours of, a uh, one hour of planning is worth 10 hours of doing. And that's something. How about that? <laughs> that's Can really, you really Mom good. Said that? that's <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's what I was going to say. Naturally, I am, I am not a planner. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm kind of, a, I am now, I'm oh. kind of a, a, you know, present person, in you the moment the person. person. But you are yeah. a good planner now. Kind of like yeah. what you said, sometimes uh, more said than done when you, you know, yeah, you, yeah. more said than done when you don't plan. And uh, yeah. so anyway, but I, I can get caught up in the moment. But uh, planning has really, really does change your life. Mm -hmm. And um, my husband is good at this. My kids are good at this. But, you know, if you really, you really have to be intentional to see something happen that you want to. And as, especially busy, as life gets busy, busier and busier it gets, you got to be intentional because mm -hmm. Christmas can come and go without being meaning, having meaning and having purpose to it. Um, but we've learned to do this all the time, uh, not just at Christmas, but with our kids and grandkids. We see each other all the time at church. We work together. Of course, we got two more that, uh, kids that one is here and one's in Tulsa. But, you know, we don't, that's not really quality time that we get to spend together. So we have to plan to get together. We have a family night. We have to plan with our grandkids. We're getting Kopi and CC tonight. Yep. So we're excited about that. And y'all should be excited about that. But <laughs> you are excited about it. But, but, you know, we do that as a family. And as our family's grown, it's been, it's been helpful to do it. And it's been more important to do it. You know, vacations that we take, holidays that we spend together and just family nights. And then the last one, if we want to do three P's, I just going to say, <laughs> like Jim, uh, three P's just is to stay pliable and uh, or stay flexible. You know, don't let plans that change or are different throw you and make you sour. What do they say that uh, sacred cows make the best hamburgers, right? <laughs> but, but you know, we can adapt and flow in seasons, uh, in seasons uh, of life. And that's what one thing we've had to do because now we, you know, Christmases don't all look the same for us. And uh, they, we have, you know, in-laws and they share, they share with their, you know, we have to share them and share grandkids and that's all good. And I, I just think oh, it's... Oh, we need to rest anyway. We yeah, we need to rest anyway. anyway. <laughs> no, but this year we're doing Christmas on the 27th, which is, which is different for us. Yeah. We've never done that, but I think it's... Jeffy's gone. So Jeff's he's gone. He's gone. We've yeah. Yeah. So, so we'll see how that goes. I don't know. But anyway, it's just, it's just a good thing for me and just to stay pliable, to stay flexible, and to realize things don't have to be the same every year. Right. We can adapt and we can mm -hmm. still enjoy every single season That's because good. of joy, yes. because of what so God's choosing. done in us. Yeah. Choose and joy. That's you right. know, the Bible says we're called the pure joy. Hmm. And it says, hmm. count it pure joy when pure you face joy. trials of many kind. And it's because if you don't stay in joy, it's easy to get uh, shipwrecked, easy to get sidetracked, instead of staying on course and seeing what God does. And that's one of the things that you've done honestly so well all these years is that uh, I have a personality that doesn't rest until God speaks to me and I know what it is. So mm -hmm. I kind of have that, but you keep it real. You keep it fun. You keep it happy. You keep it, uh, you know, you never could do it anyway. So what are you worried about? If God, <laughs> if God doesn't show up, you know, and so I've enjoyed that. And you guys, I, I, I think you probably know now, but as a kid, you probably didn't realize what a gift it was to have somebody who sets such a temperature of joy for you to live in every day. Yeah. For sure, you know? it makes a big difference, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Going down job. the road and she would pray, God keep, go ahead, finish, keep all the 
little, little creatures. creatures. Yeah. Yeah. All the that little was protection. Creatures. That was yeah. I mean, you have so many deer and, deer and, and animals. And, and then I'm bringing Dorito. No, I'm just going to shoot. I steal a lot of little things with our kids. I know. Right? Okay. Up for Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so funny. I don't even realize. But then, like yeah. when you were learning to ride your bike, you wrecked and she started laughing. Yeah. And you're like, what's well, up with it was that? Just, my now you understand it. Joy keeps you. Yeah, yeah, I kept her going. I was the only one. See? <laughs> oh, it's on video. We have joy. that forever. It, it, I actually, it was bad, then I started doing it. And I thought, oh. <laughs> I was straight into the fence and my parents were cracking up. And I was crying. I'm like, what is this? Joy. <laughs> joy. Joy. No, I love the joy of the Lord is our, of the Lord is our strength. I mean, yeah, for really sure. Is. You want to get weary. You want to get worn out. You want to yeah, get tired. That's true lose your joy that's you know exactly yeah. right. I started actually doing something here recently you talked about prayer but just like in my little drive time just th thanking God for things because oh, I think prayer good. is super important but just praise oh, you know gratefulness oh, yeah. gratefulness joy. Yeah, yeah it changes your outlook because you can really easily does. drive home and think about all the things that didn't go well that's think about so good, really. but like just saying man I'm thankful I have this I'm thankful that's for good, this Mike. and it's like I've noticed I hit the door at home a little bit happier, you yeah, know, with a little more joy. Really good. And so, that's good. yeah, it yeah, makes you a difference. Did you guys ever hear the story of Handel's and Messiah? Wrote, exactly. How he wrote the, Handel's Messiah. It's obviously reached millions and millions and multiplied millions of people. But he was in Europe, he's German, and he was in London. And they, the, for some reason, the operas and things were becoming less and less popular. So he was like close to quitting. His, his attitude wasn't good mm -hmm. at all. He wasn't even really a strong, <coughs> strong believer, but there's a man who was. And this man had God give him this, this thought about messianic prophecies to bring Europe back to God and to do all this. And he brought it to Handel. And Handel was like gruff, discouraged, not filled with joy at all. And when this was handed to him, it just, something broke in him. And he sat down, if I remember right, 24 days, he wrote, he said it was, wow. and he, the, the, the hallelujah chorus, he said it was, if I was in the presence of heaven itself. Wow. And it's, that's what joy does, is joy gives you a breakthrough moment mm -hmm. where you go from those mm -hmm. times where you thought, there was no way. And all of a sudden, you know, Handel's Messiah touches the world because yeah, God does something. So and it's so important to stay in joy for that reason. Another great story about joy is uh, Ira Sankey. I don't know if you guys, he was D.L. Moody's song leader. And he was uh, going on the Delaware River. He was going, on, it was Christmas Eve. And I, I don't know where he was going, but he was on this big boat. And they found out he was on the boat and people asked him to sing. And he was trying to think of what song to sing. And uh, God brought up this, this song that he thought, well, that's not, that doesn't fit the occasion. But he sung it anyway. Mm -hmm. And when he got done singing it, first the glory of God just fell in the song. Mm -hmm. But then this man came up and he said to him, he said, were you a, like a guard in the Civil War? Were you in the Civil War? And he said, yes. He said, did you serve in this certain location? He said, yes. He said, do you remember singing that song on a moonlit night outside of the camp where you were stationed? And can you, can you remember singing that? And he thought a minute, he said, yeah, actually I do. He said, well, he said, I was a sniper in, the, in your opposing army. I was in the Confederate army. And he said, I had my sights right on your chest. And he said, I was gonna pull the, the trigger and you started singing that oh song about goodness. God. And he said, I thought, I can't shoot him while he's singing a song about God on mm -hmm. Christmas Eve. So he said, I put down my gun and he said, I thought I was going to wait until you finished and I was going to pull it up again and I was going to shoot you. And he said, but I just couldn't do it. And he said, tonight, he said, I'm giving my life to the Lord. He said, you sung that song. And he said, it just made me realize how real God is. Can you believe wow, that? That's a great story. So joy singing i mean it just somehow it leads us somewhere yeah. and tamra yeah. that's where i just you're you're so good for me because we can't figure it all out some of us have challenges in the church some of us have things going on but listen don't let what you don't yeah. know keep yeah. you from what you do know that's don't really doubt good. in the darkness what yeah. god god has spoken to you in another time yeah. because god just has yeah. a way of getting yeah. things done really right good. i think paul and silas are a great example yeah that's right <laughs> yeah he yeah. got in the middle yeah. of a tough situation yeah, that's right. absolutely something happened yeah. <laughs> so tamra help me out we have hope we have hope we have joy no we have hope peace, peace joy, joy right. and love and, and love. love so we put them this way in our series certain hopes prevailing peace pure joy, 
and then unfailing love. We want everybody to celebrate those while at Christmas and, and especially our family. We, we want to pray for that to, to, to really prevail. I'm going to have you pray for families at okay. the NTM just so you know. So Mike, talk to us about just, just love, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever doubt God's love as a kid growing up? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I don't, I can't remember a time where I really did. You know, I think that that we've experienced it enough. I mean, we all go through seasons in life where you see things happen. Mm -hmm. and you think, why does this happen? Yeah. yeah. You know, but I think, I think when you've experienced God's love, you know, you always have that to go back to. You realize that, yeah, we live in a tough world and mm -hmm. things happen right. and there's an enemy <clears throat> and there's the flesh and there's all these things, but God is good, you know, and he's actually the one you should run to yeah. in those moments. So, um, I don't know if I remember ever having a period of time where I really doubted that, but I know that it can definitely happen because we live in a tough world sometimes. Yeah. But um, I like this outline because I think it's cool because it's like, what's the goal to experience during Christmas? Well, experience hope, experience peace, experience joy, mm. experience love, not only for us, for our families and even for our church, you know? And so, but for love, I started thinking about kind of what we were gonna talk about, you know, experiencing love over the holidays. And I thought about a scripture, I don't know if you guys know it, it says, for God so loved the world <laughs> that he gave. You know, it's probably the most quoted scripture in the, in the Bible, but it's the story of the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his son Jesus. And, and so really the, the whole reason we have Chris, Christmas, you know, mm -hmm. at the core of it is love. It was a gift right. of love. Jesus was a gift of love. So in order to really <laughs> experience Christmas, you know, the, the, the message of Christmas, what Christmas is about, we want to strive to, to learn to love well, to give love well and to receive love well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it takes a few things to do that because I think all of us know that Christmas can get very busy, especially mm -hmm. in, the, in the holidays, yeah. especially yeah. in ministry. Mm -hmm. And so I just started thinking, what are some ways we can really experience love well? What are some ways we can give love well, receive love well? And I think you guys have all nailed it on the head with the first one and it's just you planning to do that, you know, planning to make room yeah. Yeah. to love people well and to to love both your church and to love your personal family well as well um so you know christy and i we've been married for this will be our fourth christmas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so we've kind of learned every christmas a little bit about how yeah. important it is yeah. to do that because the reality yeah. is if you don't plan before things get crazy and before things That's get right. busy mm -hmm. it's a lot harder to do it in the middle of all That's of right. it and so uh that's one thing that we're doing. So. Yeah, so we people get cranky. But, yeah. uh, we've got um, <laughs> our little calendar just for the month of December on the refrigerator, and it's jam-packed. You know, like every day there's something. But like we've all talked about is being intentional, and we've made little um, days in the month of December to do special things to create little, you know, special Christmas memories with our kids and, um, you know, with family. And we're having a cousin Christmas with Ann. Mm -hmm. She's great. She's planned that. We've got that this weekend. I'm going to be there, too. Uh, <laughs> Jacob will be there, too, in his, <laughs> in his jammies. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, we've just made it, you know, a priority a priority to really um, plan ahead. And it really has made things so much easier and more joyful, for, you know, for the season of Christmas, so. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure, so, so planning. Um, another thing is just giving people an opportunity, you know, prior, to prioritize giving and serving over the holidays. Because mm -hmm. um, I think yeah. back on, you know, as a kid, and some of my greatest memories are when we were able to do things like that. So, yeah. so we just had like a serve day here that yeah. we were able to participate in at our church. We have the legacy campaign that we have going on during, the, during Christmas time. And I think whenever you, you grab on to that, you know, that Christmas isn't just about receiving, Christmas right. isn't just about yeah. gifts, but it's about showing God's love. And it's, uh, Christy just did some things with the kids the right. other day and we're starting to teach them about that. And it's, I think it's impactful and it just kind of changes your heart towards mm -hmm. the holiday season yeah. and it changes the way that you, you celebrate Christmas. So some of my greatest memories, I remember, you know, one year as, as a kid, we get, got to give a car to mm -hmm. somebody who was going through a really difficult time, yes, who was having right. some health problems. Yeah. And, and I'll never forget just leaving and, and thinking, man, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And just sharing God's love. I mean, that's what Christmas is about. You know, that's, that's why we give because God gave Jesus. And so uh, just making opportunities, both for your family and for your church to love people and to mm -hmm. spread God's that's love. Um, over the holidays. Yeah, our yeah. kids are 
Absolutely. Well, I was just thinking of that phrase, you can, you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. Mm. I think that's so important because you can go ring the Salvation Army bell and you can yeah. go do all these yeah. projects. But what touched you that night is you knew the guy, you knew his wife was going through emotional things. You saw how faithful he was in church. Right. You saw the pressure <laughs> and you saw his face whenever the car was given to him. <laughs> and I had similar things like that. One was my own face whenever I just wanted this bird's nest that was up in a tree in my Christmas tree. Right. And it was really cold. I mean, Pennsylvania can get cold. <laughs> and my brother Kenny just decided and he's going to go out in the cold and I came back and there was a nest in the tree. I mean, you'll never forget that. All the yeah. gifts you get or, or like the year my dad had a heart attack and, uh, you know, things were scarce. Mm -hmm. But I'll never forget him buying my mom this beautiful dress. Mm -hmm. Whew. Yeah. yeah. You could just feel, you know, this is, this is what it's all about. So uh, it's, not, it's not always so much, I, you know, I understand everybody has to have lists and all that. But I love when you just got to figure people out mm -hmm. and buy the gift. Mm -hmm. yeah. The way I'm wired, I like when you got to figure it out. He's the hardest to buy for, for Christmas. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you want it to be special. Yeah. But, He's but the best I like gift it because it shows that you're, really, you're really yeah. involved in these That's people's cool. everyday life. Oh, so. I'm going to buy him mm -hmm. and you too. <laughs> for two different yeah. reasons. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. Can be, it can be simple too. Right? Yeah, like, it, it can be, but it's true. Well, it has to, to be within your means, right? right. I mean, yeah. when we first got married, I mean, you guys know this, but uh, we got married 12 days after my mother died. Yeah. And so she was buried in the dress that she bought for my wedding. And, mm -hmm. you know, we were on our honeymoon on Christmas, just the right. way it all worked out. We moved the wedding up trying to do it before she died. And I'll never forget, I don't even know how you did it, because we didn't even have a car there, I don't think. I guess we did, we must have had a rental car. And mom came back with this little tree that was this mm. tall on our first Christmas and brought it into our little uh, room. Mm. And later she <laughs> looked at the tree and she said, wow, this kind of old, let's throw I said, don't you dare throw that tree away <laughs> because of the memory. It probably cost you, you know, $10. Yeah, know. Or Walmart $10. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, even little things we're trying to teach, you know, our kids. Uh, Copeland, he's two, and Cece, she's one. Um, so they're still young, but learning just about, you know, giving. So the small thing we did was we made Christmas cookies for the first time together. We decorated them, you know, made the icing, all the sprinkles, the whole thing. Oh, and we packed them up and we took them to the hospital oh, to where my granny awesome. was. And um, oh. uh, we del they got to deliver their Christmas cookies to granny. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they just saw how much it brightened mm -hmm. her little day, you know, because she's been cooped up in this room. And so they're just getting to, you know, right. experience yeah. things like that. And we tell them, you know, it's the love of Jesus. This is why we do this, you know. That's right. So just good. the little things too, you know. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, I think last year we talked about the, they're not going to remember the gifts they got, but they'll remember how mm -hmm. they felt yeah. during the holidays yeah. and how, you know, their home felt and how they got to give. And, yeah. you know, like mm -hmm. you'll always right. remember giving that car. Uh -huh. So it's right. really cool. Just little things mm -hmm. like cars. And just kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, <laughs> the cookies. <laughs> cookies and cars. <laughs> oh, you know, it's interesting though, is even when you're with Kopi, if you, if you start praying, he gets happy because his pray. little heart knows he's right. going to feel he God. You can see it with yeah, him. He's just like, so it's really kind of cool. Yeah, he loves to pray. So, so that's important. And the other thing that I thought of, too, is just, you know, church was a place that we loved to be over the holidays. Mm -hmm. We were that's blessed true. to have that at our church. And I think that's a good question to ask yourself, you know, in ministry as a pastor. Is, is church a place that yeah. my family loves <laughs> to be? Like, is it a fun place? Is it a welcoming that's place? Good. Like. We enjoyed, yeah, we you know, the pie nights and the hot chocolate <laughs> and the productions. And yeah. it was a fun place to be. And the runaway pitting. Jake's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> the the one of the best pitting. memories yeah. I had in church is seeing all these tamales go into pastor's office. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, man, I'm going to be friends with that, that guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to marry in that family. <laughs> <laughs> Those Christmas food is good. good tamales, too, I'm telling you. But that makes Homemade. a difference, you know, even now. With our, like, no, we love exactly being right. up here. We love being with our church family. Yeah, we love, but not... You know, it's I under, I recognize that it's not always that way. No. You know, right. and so I just think it's a really good th question to ask yourself in ministry. Is like, all right, if my family loves mm -hmm. to be a part of it, that's awesome. And why? Yeah. If maybe they're not feeling that way, then why? And and mm -hmm. just because if our family's not feeling that way, then chances are other families aren't yeah. feeling that way yeah. too. And obviously, it can be too much. Balance is important. Right. I'm not saying be here every yeah. night and all that kind of stuff. But I think. The type of environment that you set, man, we're mm -hmm. celebrating Jesus. It should be, a, man, 
a fun a celebratory. Fun time. Yeah. Yes, and is. so that just made a big difference. I never felt as a kid like, man, I have to go to church for Christmas, mm -hmm. man. I have I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah. And I think that says Thanks, a lot yeah. about your, mm -hmm. your culture during the holidays and it's something worth and I think mm -hmm. Copy, Copy and CC still feel that way. Uh, Copeland, so. every, all the time, will leave the church and he's like, I want to go to church. I want to go to church. Aww. He always wants to go to church. I'm like, we <laughs> practically, they practically live here, but it's okay. <laughs> he still always wants to be That's here. Good. He wants to come to it's church good all thing. the time. So church cool. being a, a place your family loves to be over the holidays mm -hmm. makes mm -hmm. a big difference. Yeah. So. And Jake grew up in the church, so. Yeah. I mean, you up. two were in the nursery <laughs> together, so you're still here. But it yeah, was biting like a, each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was not, that, that wasn't Andrea. No, you, no. Yeah, yeah. you and Michael, one of y'all bit one of, yeah. somebody bit somebody when y'all were. Well, like, y'all were the same age, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. But yeah, great memories. Toddlers, just want to clarify. We like Christy grew up in the church from a little girl. Yes, yes, we were here. Me and my mom were here every time the doors were open. Yes. She was a first generation believer, so yeah. Yeah, your mom was the second wedding I did. Yep. Actually, yes. uh, Vicky Cordy was the first. Your mom was the second. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, well, guys, I think we're, we're kind of going to wrap it up here. I want to just encourage everybody. So excited about the conference this year. It's going to be at the Archer Hotel, Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. Step outside. You're in the domain, which is just amazing. All you guys up north, come down and get warm with us, all right? Yeah. And for the rest of us, we're going to have some great fellowship. And uh, we're going to have Daniel Grothy with us. He wrote a book, The Power of Place. Okay. Part of the reason for that is I really believe that uh, we're hungering for something you know, as the people of God. A good friend of mine told me as I was talking to him on when driving to see Tamara's mother Sunday night, he told me that he and his wife are fasting because when they look at the condition of America mm, yeah. and they look at the condition of the church, they know this is a critical hour uh, for the church. And I really believe that we're gonna experience Matthew 18, 19 and 20, that because of how we connect with God, because of how we connect with each other, the presence of God's gonna be in our church is stronger than it's ever been. And we're going to be talking about stability and relationships and helping our people experience God and answer prayer. And, and we're going to talk a lot about, you know, really the messages in my heart are, first of all, the task at hand. What's God saying to us right now? Number two, the teams we have to build to be the church he's dreaming about right now. Then number three, the targets, because when we get the target right, God's grace is with us to to fulfill the things that he's dreaming about getting done. So I hope uh, hope you have time. I know registration's way ahead of last year, which is awesome. Can't wait for the event to happen. Michael, anything you want to yeah, say about no, it? No, just that it is filling up. You know, yeah, we so have so much space. If you're so, coming, hurry and register. Yeah, we would absolutely love for you to come. It's free, and the hotel, we have a good deal in the hotel. So a lot of quicker good food, you can register, great fellowship. Yeah. Yes. better. Um, so that we can be ready for you and so that we don't run out of space before you get to register. So, <laughs> I'd love to but, have you. Yeah, we're super excited about yeah, it. And I know there's some people I saw today that are going to be there, so I can't wait to hang out with you guys. It's going to mm -hmm. be so much fun. Yeah, yeah. that's so good. Yeah. And, you know, one it's of the things that, that I know <laughs> most pastors my age recognize is, man, we got to be a family. we got to be there for each other. we got to support yeah. each other. God's going to get it done. When we connect with Him right, connect with each other right, God just gets great things mm -hmm. done. So if you've never been to one of the conferences, the fellowship is just amazing. Right. The, the fellowship with God and with people. Mm -hmm. So we hope that you can come. I promised that we were going to go ahead and get you out a little bit early because it's Christmas. So I'm going to go ahead and ask Tamara if you'll just pray for everybody sure. as, they, as, as the Christmas countdown happens the next 10 days. And for me, again, I like Christmas to have like high points leading into <laughs> Christmas. And I love the week between Christmas and New Year's because I rest and I get refreshed for the new year. And uh, we'll be praying for you guys to do the same. Mike, did you yeah, want me? I just want to remind everybody, this is our last webinar of 2022. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. been fun. We'll be back on January 12th. Yep. January so mark 12th. your calendars. We'll have uh, Pastor Mike. Mike Conway. Conway. Yes. Conway. Yes. Yes. That'll it's be great, be awesome. Mike. So That's great. You guys have an awesome Christmas. Happy New Year. And we'll see Merry you Christmas, see you guys. Year. Merry Christmas. Yes. Merry Christmas, pastors. We love you and appreciate you. Thank God for the, we thank God for the work you're doing in your area. So we just pray blessing yeah. over you. Let's, let's just say yeah. a quick prayer. Amen. Father, we just thank you for our time together today. Just thank you for the men and women who are with us today, just listening. And Father, we, we appreciate God so much. And Lord, I know we do, but you do even more appreciate the work that 
that they're doing in their communities, Father, all over the world, God. They're a light in the midst of a dark, dark world, and we are so grateful for them. Lord Jesus, you said that you walk among the churches and you hold the leaders in your hands. And God, I thank you in this season, God, that they're going to have a wonderful Christmas, that you'll just bless them with peace and joy. And Father, let it be a memorable Christmas. But Lord, beyond that, I thank you for a fresh vision for the new year. Thank you for speaking to their hearts and Lord, just putting new purposes and new plans in their heart for what you have ahead. God, we know this is the hour, Father, that you are looking to your church to be, Father, something very special in this season, God. So we worship you, we thank you, and we just pray great blessing on every pastor, every family, God, represented among our pastors. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, the last thing I want to say is that, man, I would not want to do life without so many of you guys. Thank you for really seriously. Thank you for being such incredible friends. Uh, go ahead, buy your wife that diamond. Go ahead, buy your kid that toy. Uh, this is the time of year. Don't think about budgets. Just go do something fun. Buy yourself something. Just remind yourself God's with you. And, uh, you know, we just want you to know we love you so much. Seriously, so many of you guys are the best friends in the world. And uh, we just want to wish you a Merry Christmas and hope you and yours have the most incredible one ever. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.